What is up my aesthetic boys, it's Fresh, back with another video. Today we have an episode of r slash murdered by words, and let me tell you, if you're looking for the finest of the finest roasts on the internet, you've come to the right place. Whoa, 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 what is this now? Two cartoon characters who appear to be female sharing a kiss? Cartoon Network, what are you doing? How and why are they showing this to kids? Oh, well, they've always shown kissing in cartoons here. Look at this, this is in black and white, so it must be old. Yeah, but that's a man and a woman. Sir, those are rats. Oh, come on! Their names are Mickey and Minnie Mouse, for gosh sakes, how can you say that? Fifteen years ago, a generation of baby boomers built their dream houses. Now, they can't sell them. A growing problem in real estate. Too many, too big houses. Well, they should spend less money on coffee and try pulling themselves up by their bootstraps and accepting a low offer just to get some experience selling houses under their belts. Doesn't feel so good now, huh? If God has a plan for everyone, and a fetus is a person, can't abortion just be their plan? No, because that would mean that God planned a murder. He wouldn't do that. Now, that last sentence is the religious equivalent of a sports fan referring to their favorite team as we. Like, oh, I'm sorry, did you just get off the phone with the G-Man, the big guy upstairs? Did you really go back to the Yahweh days with him? Or, and bear with me here, are we just both locked in an unwinnable battle of interpretive mumbo-jumbo over centuries-old translated works? Because not to nitpick, but there is that one time where he planned the murder of 42 children by summoning two bears to maul them to death for making fun of a bald man's head in the Bible. Did you read the Bible, or just pretend it says whatever you like? NHL contracts today just blow my mind. I remember when you actually had to earn high salaries, now they're just given and hope they work out. Crazy. Oh, you know, you're absolutely right, Jeremy. The league was better when the Kings paid you $5 million in 2006 for, uh, no, this can't be right. Nine goals and 22 points? Really? 22 points? That would put Jeremy here is not in the top 10. Uh, not even the top 50. Yikes, top 100 and still going? 200? 300? Jesus, 22 points put him as the 360th player in the league, despite having the 25th largest paycheck when all was said and done. Way to earn that cash, my guy. Do atheists use the word goodbye? Would they still use it if they were aware of its origin being, God be with you? Oh wow, what a brilliant gotcha question. Obviously, our use of the term goodbye shows we're really theists. Just like your use of the words Wednesday and Thursday and Friday show that you are really a believer in the Norse pantheon, and you tack on the Romans with Saturday. Gotcha back! Or maybe the meaning of expressions evolve over time, and current usage often has no particular relevance to derivation. Nah, who am I to say, though? Your generation are mostly spoiled brats that cry if they don't get their way. As if your generation didn't spit on soldiers and implode if a black person used the same water fountain. Wake up, Wanda. My heart gets heavy, thinking about the giant trash island in the ocean. <sighs> Got me down just thinking about it. Yeah, England is a joke. I mean, seriously. Football, but the wrong kind. The naming sequence makes sense, but that's about it. Sorry, but your essential oils are essentially useless. A bit like a flu shot if you ask me. Well, nobody asked you first of all, but I wouldn't call reducing incidence of flu by 40% on average, and ICU admissions for the flu by 82% quote, essentially useless. But anti-vaxxers aren't good at risk assessment or statistics anyway. I will say that I'm definitely disappointed, but I can't say that I'm surprised. I literally had to show ID to post on here. Roast me. This is a tough one. I don't know, this is a conventionally attractive looking woman. Uh, pretty young good skin, I guess? We'll see what the commenters have to say. Now, there's a certain niche of r slash roast me posters that all fall into the same category. Those who weren't cursed with some hideous amalgamation of grotesque features, but rather actually look like functioning members of modern society. For them, the roasts can't be skin deep. You need to look inward. Look into those unremarkable brown eyes and into that learned forced smile done just right so the corners of her eyes peek up so it looks like she's genuinely happy. That's where this niche of r slash roast me posters have flaw. It's the practice smile learned over years to cope with what they're missing in life. A neglectful father who drinks to cope with his wife and daughter. An abusive boyfriend who just needs one more chance. A circle of fake friends who criticize every decision you make. Maybe it's simpler. You're not able to get the likes that you want on Instagram. Nobody you want to talk to hits you up on Snapchat. Not enough people retweet your tweets. So, you come. 
like many others, to r slash roast me in hopes of someone giving you the validation you've never been able to find in life. And that's where the flaw lies. You're never going to be good enough. And no number of compliments from strangers on the internet will ever change that fact. Oh my god. I... I feel kind of bad having read that. In 1944, 75 years ago, the hashtag Red Army liberated the Estonian capital Tallinn from Nazi occupation. Moscow is celebrating with a firework display at Russian names on Sunday. Oh, that's fun. They included a little video of fireworks. How wholesome. Yeah, but we reject historically inaccurate claims by at MFA Russia that hashtag Estonia was, quote, liberated by Soviet troops. The Republic of Estonia didn't take part in World War II and was occupied by both Nazi Germany and Soviet Russia. The so-called liberation was occupation that lasted nearly 50 years. Yeah, here's a quick not-so-fun fact of Soviet occupation following the end of the Second World War. Sachsenhausen, a camp a few hours outside of Berlin, not only was the site of some 30,000 wartime deaths, but another 13,000 deaths in the five years following the war under, and get this, Soviet control, how fun! Now, while that was obviously sarcasm, I feel the need to put a little tag here that says, that was sarcasm, in case I get misquoted. I think the spookiest thing that happened last night at Horror Nights was when Terry Crews rudely said, uh, no, when I asked for a picture. Actually, no, the scariest thing I saw was you rudely pushing through my kids like a zombie to ask for one. I'm Terry Crews, look, I have the blue check mark. I'm Terry Crews, I would know. Eight-year-olds nowadays have iPhone 7 or 10, but when I was eight years old, I had this. Bet y'all don't know this. I mean, it says PSP on the back of it. I feel like most kids nowadays would know what it was. And whoever had a PSP when they were eight, they were just as spoiled as these eight-year-olds who have an iPhone. Okay, first of all, super weird opening line to suggest that the two fancy iPhones one could have would be the iPhone 7 or the iPhone 10, seemingly disregarding the three echelons of more advanced iPhone, that's the 7 plus, the 8, and the 8 plus that separate the two, or the fact that the iPhone 10 hasn't even been sold by Apple for over a year and is now a two-generation old flagship, or the fact that the iPhone 7 came out in the fall of 2016, and a kid having a three- or four-year-old phone that maybe their parents used for a while seems like a super reasonable thing. Uh, I digress. But let me digress further. If you were 8 years old in 2005 when the PSP came out, your parents would shell out a pretty 249 US dollars to put that shiny piece of plastic under the religious holiday shrubbery of your choice. An iPhone 7, however, can be had today for well under $200, not even to mention inflation, which would make your PSP $328.67 in 2019 cash. That makes you about twice as spoiled as a kid with a $150 iPhone. The numbers don't lie, Samoa Joe. My fiance gets back from deployment in two days. How do I get rid of these? Wow, that's a lot of hickeys. Damn. Cheating and asking for help on the internet. This is definitely going to turn out well. Reddit is the best place to ask for advice on how to cover up cheating. Great. Great. I can't stress how great of an idea this was on your part. Makeup. Loads and loads of makeup. Preferably white. Cover the face area as well to match the neck. Get yourself a red nose to finish the cover-up. That way you can look like a clown since your relationship is a f joke. I got a job at Comcast and completed training so I could fix my own cable because it was faster than being on a hold with customer service. It's getting insane. Now even Mattel is creating their new gender-neutral dolls. Creatable world. They are pushing kids into this and it's totally against how God created us man and woman. Now you can be whatever you want at any moment. Uh, you can be whatever you want at any moment and you still chose to be a bigot. If they show sports events at bars, why don't they show TV shows? Someone should get to making a fandom bar. No, but seriously, can you imagine? I mean, fandom-themed drinks, TV show marathon nights, discounts to cosplayers, and special season finale events. Why isn't this a thing? Well, probably because none of you ever leave the house, nor are any of you old enough to drink. Okay, so let me get this straight. Tumblr is telling me that a successful business model is a fandom bar filled with underage furries. Yikes. The True Man Show. Roses are red. The earth doesn't spin. The sky is a dome and we're stuck within. 
Yeah, here's a snarky comment in response to that. Roses are red? Turns out it does spin. It's not NASA's fault that your IQ is 10. You really tried to rhyme 10 and spin and then insulted someone's IQ? It's hard to pull off in a song, much less a terrible- Oh my god, this poem is way too long. I'm not reading all this. Yikes, that's a lot of cringe for someone to write like a 20 line poem in response to a meme, probably meme post about Flat Earth. Though, to be fair, the dude then uses the word quarrel to describe an argument in the comments of this, so we can't take him too seriously.